This webinar is sponsored by NEC Corporation, a $37 billion technology leader with a 100-year history of innovation. NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite was the first data center-grade SDN leveraging the OpenFlow protocol. Deployed globally today, Programmable Flow transforms network performance and agility by providing production-ready SDN solutions that increase flexibility, visibility, and efficiency while reducing complexity and costs. To find additional SDN, OpenFlow, and network function virtualization resources, visit ipspace.net slash SDN. Welcome to the software-defined networking, OpenFlow, and network function virtualization webinar in which I'll go over the basics of what SDN is, how different people are defining it, how it can be useful, and then we'll go into two technologies that are tightly coupled with the principles of software-defined networks. OpenFlow on one end as the new forwarding and controller-based networking paradigm, and network function virtualization, which allows us to convert the network services in virtualized format. As always, I have Samrat Ganguly from NEC Corporation with us, and Samrat will help me answer any questions that you might have regarding the NEC's programmable flow product, which is, as I'll later mention, one of the best controller-based SDN solutions on the market today. Samrat, please do introduce yourself. Thank you, Ivan. Hi, I'm Samrat Ganguly from NEC the chief architect leading the NEC's technology and production solutions in the space of software-defined networking and network function virtualization. In particular, I'm focusing to the data center network virtualization as well as the carrier network-related activities in the network function virtualization space. I'll be happy to answer any of the questions that comes in through this webinar. Thank you. And I'm Ivan Pepelniak. I've been in networking for too long, so I started around 1985. I was the technical director of my company for a long, long time and then became chief technology advisor, which gave me time to start blogging and do interesting consulting, writing books and webinars. On top of that, I'm also teaching at University of Ljubljana, and when they asked me to choose the subject I want to teach, I went like, well, scalable web application design is exactly what the students need most because of what we see out in the wild. My focus in recent years has been on large-scale data centers and network virtualization, as well as solutions for large private and public clouds. On the other hand, as our dimension, scalable application design, as well as traditional technologies like core IP routing with MPLS, IPv6, or VPNs. You want to know more about that? Follow the links at the bottom of this slide. Today's webinar wouldn't be free and public without NEC Corporation of America. Huge thank you to NEC for sponsoring this webinar and making it available to all of you. I have to mention that this is not the first webinar that NEC has sponsored. They have already sponsored two webinars, one on their programmable flow suite and the other one generic on SDN use cases. So they don't only have an SDN-based solution that actually works, they're also investing heavily in teaching the market what OpenFlow and SDN is, even in cases where the message might not be totally to their liking, which I totally admire about them. I already mentioned the programmable flow solution, so let me briefly explain what it is and how it fits into the rest of today's webinar. What they have is a solution where they have a cluster of OpenFlow controllers that manage up to 200 switches. Later on, I'll show you what the primary application of their programmable flow controller is. The controllers can be programmed through CLI, through GUI, through RESTful API, and they are well integrated with OpenStack and OpenDaylight. 
on the hardware side, because this is not just a controller solution, they have a total end-to-end -end solution, including the edge and core switches. In theory, you could use any OpenFlow switch with their controller, and they have been demonstrating that at Interop. In particular, their switches are listed on this slide, from the 1 gig edge switch on the left-hand side to 10 gig core switch on the right-hand side and virtual switch in Hyper-V. All the switches support OpenFlow 1.0, and the X switches also support OpenFlow 1.3. As you can see on the X switches, you have a large number of full OpenFlow entries, which allows you to do things like policy-based routing, security, filters, traffic redirection, and so on and so on. The primary application that they're offering are programmable flow virtual tenant networks. It's an implementation of virtual networks, and conceptually, what they offer you are layer 2 and layer 3 segments. Every virtual tenant network is composed of a number of layer 2 virtual bridges that can be linked together with a virtual router. Then, of course, you have, as always in physical networks, the virtual interfaces, external interfaces going toward VLANs physical ports or VMs, internal interfaces on bridges and routers. And I do have to mention that for quite a long time, their solution supports both IPv4 and IPv6. If you want to know more about their solution, we did a number of webinars. And I would strongly recommend that you first watch the programmable flow deep dive which goes into way more details on what they're doing, because today I simply don't have time, although I love talking about their solution. The other webinar we did together is SDN use cases, where I was talking about generic SDN use cases, but also mentioning how you could implement a particular use case with their product. Obviously, you could implement the same use cases with other products, but as they were sponsoring the webinar, I described how you can implement a particular use case using programmable flow switches. Is there a reason why the core only supports OpenFlow 1.0 and not OpenFlow 1.3? In their solution, they implemented what I call path-based forwarding. In the core, you don't need the granularity that you have on the edge. You also don't need complex forwarding functions like multiple tables that you need on the edge. So on the core side, OpenFlow 1.0 capabilities are more than enough. On the other hand, on the edge switches, you need a large number of flows to implement traffic classification and so on and so on and you need things like security for which you need flows. So on the edge switches, it's more important that you have multiple forwarding tables that you can chain together, which OpenFlow 1.3 brings to the table, as well as large number of flows. Second question, how can you support more than 200 switches with the programmable flow controller? Right now, you have to build separate clusters and interface them with traditional means. And the third one, is it possible to implement multipathing on a tenant network to avoid oversubscription higher in the network? You shouldn't think about a tenant network like something that is mapped to specific physical infrastructure. It's a virtual concept, and what actually happens is that the programmable flow controller compiles your definition of the tenant network and downloads the flow entries into the edge switches. And whenever an ingress edge switch has to send traffic to an egress edge switch, it actually sends the traffic along a path. And you can have multiple parallel paths, and there are mechanisms how you can do multipathing so that, for example, in a class fabric, you get good distribution across all the spine switches. Thank you for attending this webinar sponsored by NEC Corporation.
For more information on NEC or the Programmable Flow Networking Suite, visit us online at necam.com slash SDN. To arrange a demo or to pilot Programmable Flow SDN, call your NEC account rep or contact NEC directly at necam.com slash contact us. Thank you for your interest in NEC's Programmable Flow Networking Suite. Additional SDN, OpenFlow, and Network Function Virtualization webinars, recordings, and workshops, as well as other resources like books and case studies, are waiting for you at ipspace.net slash SDN.